Russia's use of hybrid warfare, which spans everything from military activities to cyber warfare to the spread of disinformation and propaganda, is really grounded in Russia's broader strategic imperatives. So if you take a look at a map of Russia and Europe, there's very little in terms of geographic barrier separating the core of Russia and the core of Europe. And this has played out historically in terms of competition and conflicts between Russia and the West. This has especially happened in the borderlands between Russia and Europe. So countries like the Baltic states, Ukraine, uh, the Caucasus even, all of these have served as areas of, of influence that Russia has sought to pull in its orbit just as the West and Europe has sought to pull into their orbit. So we've seen examples of this play out historically from Napoleon's invasion of Russia to the Nazi war march into the Soviet Union. And then finally, the Soviet Union's pushback against Germany and its takeover of Central and Eastern Europe. This competition expanded to take more of a global proportion when the United States rose as a global power leading up to and especially after World War II, where essentially you had rival blocs form Russia in the Warsaw Pact under the Soviet Union on one hand, and then the transatlantic alliance between Europe and the U.S. in the form of, of NATO and also the EU on the other. Um, and we've seen this conflict play out over time. We've, we're seeing it currently now in the Russia-West standoff that's taking place over areas like Ukraine, and now that's expanded to places like Syria as well. Now, within this conflict and within this competition, we've seen Russia use a number of different tactics in its standoff with the West. And increasingly, we've seen that play out not only in terms of conventional military buildups, like we're seeing on the borders of Ukraine, uh, but we see it in paramilitary activities within Ukraine itself, within countries like Georgia and, and Moldova. But we're also seeing it expand to areas in the information space, in, into cyberspace. So essentially, it's adding new elements to what is a long-standing competition between Russia and the West. So if we look at Russia's hybrid warfare strategy, there's essentially three different tiers of countries that Russia targets. And it, and it plays out in different ways in terms of Russia's use of hybrid tactics. So the first tier is the states closest to Russia, countries like Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia in the former Soviet periphery. And right here, Russia uses a number of different uh, tools in its hybrid toolkit. This includes everything from conventional military tactics like we saw in Crimea, um, and now we're, as we're seeing in Eastern Ukraine, uh, to political manipulation, to energy cutoffs. These are countries that are very dependent economically on Russia, and Russia has exploited that for political reasons. The second tier of countries is a little further out, and that consists of the Baltic states, Central Europe, Southern Europe, and the Balkans. Now here, Russia doesn't have quite as much leverage over these countries because they're a bit more geographically distant from Russia, as is the case of the Balkans and Central Europe, or as is the case of the Baltics, they're EU and NATO members, so they have some level of protection via Article 5. But Russia does have quite strong tools to use in these countries as well which has included using cyber attacks, which has included using ethnic Russian populations, for example, in the Baltic states, um, and which has also included economic and energy cutoffs. Now, finally, we have the third tier, which are the core Western states, including Germany, France, and the United States. In these countries, any military action is virtually unthinkable on the part of Russia. But what Russia does do is try to manipulate the country's political systems, and they do that through the use of disinformation through the use of propaganda, uh, hacking attacks like we've seen most prominently in the U.S. elections. What Russia is essentially trying to do here is undermine the stability of these countries politically and to try to weaken Western unity within the EU and NATO formats. Now, the tools that Russia has used in terms of its hybrid warfare with the West has had varying levels of success, uh, but it's also created a, a significant pushback on the part of these countries against Russia's hybrid efforts. So we've seen everything from the creation of cybersecurity centers uh, within these countries to anti-propaganda efforts to uh, coordination on things like fighting Russian disinformation tactics and to try to really create a united front against Russia, which we've seen Western countries push back on in terms of their own uh, military buildups, their own energy diversification efforts, and even their own propaganda efforts against Russia. So we've seen that Russia's hybrid warfare strategy has come with some significant benefits, but also a lot of costs. And the more that these countries in the West are 
both recognizing and fighting back against Russia's hybrid warfare strategy, the more precarious Russia's position becomes. And so especially with Russia facing its own internal political challenges, its economy is under stress because of sanctions, but also most prominently because of the low price of oil, and Russia facing a pretty weak demographic outlook in the future, ultimately what we see here is that Russia's strategic position is going to weaken over time rather than strengthen. But we can definitely expect Russia to use and adapt its hybrid warfare strategy in the future over its standoff with the West.